Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So this is a very exciting day for me. Um, I'm going to compare three zoom lenses that I wanted to test out for a long time. Now previously I had compared the Canon uh, 100 to 500 millimeter lens with my own uh, first generation Tamron um, 150 to 600 millimeter lens and then people told me, hey, you know what, you should be comparing the Canon to the Gen 2 version of the Tamron and perhaps uh, to the Sigma 150 to 600 millimeter lens. So that's exactly what I'm going to do today. So what, what I'll do is I'll do a few control tests indoors and then I'll take these lenses out to the field and see how they compare. Now if you don't want to stay towards the end of the video, then I can tell you right away that the Canon 100 to 500 millimeter lens is by far the best lens of the three. Um, and in second place is the Sigma and third place is the Tamron. If you want to figure out why and what the features are, please stay towards the end of the video. Um, also please remember to subscribe and also like the video so I can uh, keep making videos like this and it keeps me you know, encouraged to make more videos. I don't have a whole lot of time and I do this just for fun and because I love photography and you know, looking at various lenses. So your support will be greatly appreciated. So let's look at some of the features of these lenses. So if you look at weight, this is obviously the lightest uh, and also, also the smallest. So it's easy to pack, it's easy to handhold. Uh, the Tamron is heavier and the um, Sigma is the heaviest. This is a Sigma Sport, so it's very heavy, but it's also a bit like a tank. The Sigma Contemporary version is uh, similar, somewhat similar in weight to the Tamron. If you look at build quality, the, the Canon is an L-series lens, so it's, uh, the build quality is excellent. It's not all metal to keep the weight down, but you know, the important parts like the base, the mount, you know, the uh, all the points where it attaches to the camera are all metal um, and, and the, even the plastics are very high quality plastic. The uh, lens hood has a window through which you can uh, you know, adjust the filters. So I think this is a very you know, well made lens. It's supposed to be weather resistant. Um, so you can use it in pouring, well not in pouring, in light rain without much issues. I don't know if I would be using it in very heavy rain regardless. Uh, it's a, a quite an expensive lens. The, the uh, Tamron, the build quality of the Tamron, the Gen 2 is, is much better than the Generation 1. You know, the, there are a lot of metal parts. The um, lens hood is, is plastic, but it's much higher quality plastic and not as flimsy as the, as the Gen 1. The Sigma is built like a tag. It feels the best made out of the three, but it's also very heavy. So all of it is, is essentially metal. The lens hood is metal as well, and it, it has a screw-in mechanism, much like the, the Canon 600 millimeter F4 lens, which is a $13,000 lens. Um, the, the contemporary version of the Sigma is lighter, but um, so, you know, it's probably not as uh, robust as this lens, but I think the weather uh, ceiling on that and this is somewhat similar you know they say that the sport version you can use it in light rain the contemporary version is also supposed to be moisture and dust resistant just like this one they don't mention whether it can be used in light rain or not but um, I think the the key difference between the two is just that this is mostly metal so it can probably take a little more beating than the other lens so let's uh, look at the zoom um, lock so you know this um, the, the Sigma has a, has a zoom lock, okay? So uh, you can lock it in the retracted position and then once you zoom all the way out, you can lock it in that position as well. Uh, Sigma's website says you can lock it in intermediate positions too, but, but I don't know if there's a way to do it. I couldn't do it. So you can only lock it in the fully extended or fully retracted position. And if you don't lock it, there's quite a bit of zoom creep, right? So if you're, if this is hanging um, uh, on your shoulder and you're walking around, if it's not locked, it's going to, uh, it's going to extend like that. The, uh, the Tamron has a better mecha mechanism. So there's a lock function as well. There's a zoom um, lock switch as well. But in addition, 
let's say you're you're zooming zooming out well, let me unlock it first let's say you're zooming out and you want to hold it in that position you just pull the zoom ring out like that and then it'll lock it in position and if you want to zoom again you pull it back zoom out and lock it again okay so i think this is uh, a much better um, mechanism than in the Gen 1 version. The zoom lock function, I think, is best implemented in the Canon. So it does not have a, a, a switch to lock zoom, but it does have a ring where you can you can tighten or loosen how you know how fast the zoom moves. So if you have it in the tightest position, you know you can still zoom out, but it doesn't creep at all. So there you go. So you know if you have it zoomed out. It's not going to creep. Now, if you do, if you have it in the lightest position, then the zoom mechanism becomes easier and it will creep, right? But so, so I think this is probably the best um, type of zoom lock I've seen. So the advantage is, let's say you have it locked, and then and then you know it's not going to creep. But if a bird flies and you want to get in on the action quickly, you can quickly zoom in or out without having to fiddle with a lock switch or you don't have to push the zoom ring in or out like, like in the camera. So let's see what I found. So here's the Canon uh, image on the left and the Sigma on the right. So you can see that the Canon image appears a little brighter, but obviously the f-stop is 7.1 um, and the ISO is 12,800. So the, the lighting was not great, but this is kind of real world conditions. You know, if you're going out early in the morning or later in the evening, the lighting may not be perfect. So here it's, you know, the, the f-stop is a little uh, smaller. It's a third of a stop smaller at 6.3, but the Sigma is exposing the image a little darker. If you zoom in um, and if you focus on the N and if you focus on the M, the Canon I think is, uh, is slightly sharper than the Sigma and there's more contrast. So if you look around the lettering, there's some blurring of the letters. So here it's much sharper. And then if you look at this plus sign, it's much sharper on the Canon compared to the Sigma. And you can also see some of these you know, lines uh, on the Canon compared to Sigma. And if you look at these, um, these lines up here, you know, they feel much more crisper on the Canon, although it's at 12,800 ISO. And if you look on the Sigma, you can also see some magenta color fringing, which you don't see as much on the Canon. There's a little bit, but, but certainly not as much. Um, and if you bring up a a raw image of the Sigma, obviously, you know, there's a lot of noise. Uh, the previous ones were JPEG, but you can see a little more detail. And let me bring up a corresponding uh, Canon image uh, that is raw. So here's a comparison of the raw images, Canon on the left, Sigma on the right. The image is bigger due to the slightly higher zoom range. Um, if you zoom in, obviously, you can see a whole lot of noise, but still, uh, and this is again at 12,800 ISO, the Canon appears much more sharper than the Sigma. And once again, if you go up and look at the cross, this appears sharper. Um, once again, you know, when it's raw, you can see a little more of the uh, fine detail. Uh, and you can still see a little bit of color fringing on the Sigma. And I think the Canon images do appear slightly sharper uh, than the Sigma. Now, comparing the uh, Canon with the Tamron at 1 by 640th of a second, again at ISO, uh, pretty high ISO, the Tamron again exposes a little darker compared to the Canon. And if you zoom in, the Canon is sharper than the Tamron. You can see some smudging of the lettering around it. There's more contrast from the Canon. Again, look at the plus sign. It's much crisper on the Canon compared to the Tamron. And on the Canon, you can see these, uh, you know, slightly angled lines. You can't see it as much on the Tamron. And if you go up, uh, you know, here again, you see a lot of magenta color fringing in this area, and you don't see it as much, you know, maybe very little on the Canon. And the, the lines appear much more crisper, although it's at a very high ISO. 
Now comparing the Zygma to the Tamron, um, so again, the, 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 here they are quite comparable in how they expose the Tamron may be exposing very slightly brighter uh, compared to Sigma, but there's not much of a difference. And then if you zoom in, they're both equally sharp. I think the Sigma may be a tad bit sharper than the Tamron, but that would be, you know, a splitting hairs. Uh, the cross appears, you know, somewhat slightly crisper on the Sigma compared to the Tamron. And then if you go up on these lines, they kind of look similar to me. There's, you know, some magenta fringing on both the um, uh, Sigma and the Tamron. Um, so, so at one by six fortieth of a second, I think both Sigma and Tamron are pretty comparable uh, in sharpness. Uh, if I were to give the edge, at least in my, you know, few images, I thought maybe the Sigma was teeny bit uh, sharper uh, than the Tamron. So here's the comparison between Canon and Sigma at, by, at 1 by 50th of a second. Remember, these are uh, extremely long zoom lenses, so even you know, able to uh, handhold at such low shutter speeds is amazing in, a, in of itself. But once again, Canon appears a little brighter compared to the Sigma. When you zoom in, um, both are fairly sharp, but the Canon is, uh, is certainly sharper than the Sigma. So look at the plus sign here. It's much sharper on the Canon compared to the Sigma. The lettering is slightly sharper on the Canon. There's a little more contrast on Canon. And then uh, if you look at these images, you know, the, the Canon is definitely sharp. If you look at these sawtooth edges, they, you can see it a little more clearer on the Canon compared to the Sigma. So, you know, all of the images uh, I took, all five images on the Canon that I took at one by 50th were consistently sharp and equally sharp. With the Sigma, four of them were fairly sharp. The fifth one was blurred. So, you know, there's there's more consistency in the Canon in getting sharper shots at low shutter speeds. When you compare the Tamron at a lower shutter speed uh, to the Canon, the Tamron tended to be much more variable in how many uh, shots you would get in focus. So look at this image here. This is, you know, quite out of focus. And then if you go to the next image, it's slightly, uh, you know, better focus. It's slightly sharper. Um, this one is completely out of focus. This one is, is sharper, but still not quite as sharp, you know, as the Canon. Um, so at one by, you know, 50th of a second, it was very hard to get a, a really sharp shot on the Tamron unless you fired multiple shots. So I went out to my local lake in search of some birds. So today was not the best day. It was overcast, you know, slightly drizzling. Uh, the light was low and, you know, the only birds I could find were a few uh, Canada goose and a few ducks. And it was very hard to find comparable shots at similar poses and similar lighting between the three lenses. Not to mention it was extremely difficult to lug the three lenses around and try to change them, you know, along with the EF2RF adapter and so forth. Uh, but, you know, I've tried to compile a few images that are somewhat comparable. So here is a Sigma on the left and Tamron on the right. Both have been processed to an equal degree. Um, so, you know, the, um, the exposure has been brought up, the shadows have been brought up, there's a little bit of noise reduction and sharpening applied, but both have been done to the same degree. And, you know, they, the images look kind of comparable, but when you zoom in, you know, to the eyes, um, I do think the Sigma is slightly sharper uh, than the Tamron. And obviously, you would only know this if you compare them side to side. Now, um, there is a little bit of chromatic aberration and, uh, you know, a little bit of color fringing um, on, on both at the, you know, when you look at the um, areas of the, the sharp differences and contrast. Um, so if you, if you look closely here, you know, there's some chromatic aberration and color fringing. Um, but it's very easy to remove on Lightroom by the click of a button and, and it'll go away. So let's look at another uh, image. Uh, again, 
um, sigma on the left and tamaron on the right. So if you zoom in on this one, the tamaron actually appears slightly sharper than the sigma, although the sigma is sharp as well. So obviously here the lighting is a di little different, the distance is slightly different, but consistently uh, on my shots I found that the sigma was perhaps a tiny bit sharper than the tamaron, and then the tamaron uh, was sometimes just as sharp as the sigma, but the hit rate of uh, sharpness was more on the sigma compared to the tamaron. Here's an image of the um, Sigma on the left and Canon on the right. So the Sigma image is much closer compared to the Canon. Um, so let's zoom in and look at the Sigma versus the Canon. So although the uh, Canon image is further away, I felt the Canon was sharper. You can see very little chromatic aberration. You know, it's very, very minimal compared to the other two lenses. But again, a click of a button uh, on Lightroom will, will make that go away. You can also see the, you know, little um, uh, water droplets um, on the head. It's pretty sharp. Again, these are less than ideal conditions. The exposure has been brought up quite a bit. So if you look at the uh, if I reset the image, you know, this is what it looks like. So it's a it's a highly processed image, you know, in less than ideal lighting conditions. But, you know, bo all three lenses were, you know, really at the same, um, sa under the same conditions. So, you know, once again, I thought the Canon lens was consistently sharper with better contrast compared to the um, other two lenses. Here is a somewhat compar comparable image. Um, Canon on the left and Tamron on the right. So, you know, the Canon is a little closer compared to the Tamron, but they're close enough. So if you zoom in on the eye, you can see that the Canon is extremely sharp. Again, the, the, this was very challenging conditions, high ISOs um, and cloudy skies. And these images, the exposures have been brought up quite a bit. So here's the Tamron. You can see that the eye is much softer than uh, the, the Canon. You can even see the horizon uh, reflected in the eyes on the Canon image. So this is one of the sharper Tamron images. You know, if you go through these series of um, images, you know, some of those images are, uh, you know, not sharp at all. So let's see if you bring this one up. Yeah, see, this is much less sharper. So the Tamron, you know, the hit rate for sharpness is considerably lower than the uh, Canon and somewhat lower than the Sigma as well. Now, when the images were sharp, both the Tamron and the Sigma were somewhat equally sharp. But again, the consistency was just not there with the Tamron. Since the uh, real world subjects were not cooperating, I decided to do a little more uh, control testing using this bird here. So it's the um, Sigma on the left and the Tamron on the right. Uh, similar settings, um, you know, at a, a one, one by one thousandth of a second, the Sigma shows a slightly higher ISO than the Tamron. But so if you zoom in, you know, they are actually similar in sharpness. Um, I, you know, looked at multiple images and, you know, when they're stationary, the image quality appears to be similar to on, on both. Some images on the Tamron, you know, as I noticed before, were less sharp. So these were stationary subjects and the uh, Sigma was sharp on most of them. Again, the Tamron, some images were uh, softer. Again, it was less consistent than the uh, Sigma. Okay, so here is the uh, Sigma on the left and uh, Canon on the right. Obviously, the Sigma is closer because of the um, 600 millimeter versus 500 millimeter uh, zoom. Uh, if you notice something, you know, despite a, an f-stop of 6.3, uh, the ISO is higher on the Sigma compared to the Canon. Uh, the Canon shows 3200 for an ISO, whereas the Sigma, uh, you know, it shows a higher ISO. And that's something I notice consistently Although, now the difference between the f-stops between these two lenses is only a third of a stop, okay? So there shouldn't be much difference. But a lot of times, even with the Tamron uh, compared to the Canon, even at 6.3 versus 7.1, the Canon shows similar ISOs to the other two lenses, and sometimes it shows a lower ISO. 
So when you zoom in, the sigma lens is sharp, and you know even from a f even though the image itself is a little smaller, the the Canon lens is consistently sharper. So if you look at the eye, it is sharper. Uh, look closely at the beak. See the beak is much better defined here compared to the sigma. You know, you only notice this when you're zooming it uh, one to one. Now, from further away, both pictures look really good. But if you do, if you zoom in and pixel peep, the the Canon uh, is definitely better. One other thing I noticed was that, you know, at 600 millimeters, the eye detect on the R5 seemed to find the eye much better on the Sigma compared to the Canon because the image is slightly far away. So if you take two or three steps forward and make the bird a little bigger on the frame, then the Canon uh, R5 with the Canon lens um, was just as quick to pick up the eye. Or you can do the crop mode um, where the uh, subject lo looks bigger on the frame. So anytime the subject is bigger in the frame, the uh, eye detect works much better. So what do I think of uh, these lenses? I definitely thought that Canon was the best lens of the three. It is much sharper, the image quality is better, there's more contrast, the lens is much lighter and you can handhold it much easier. It's also smaller and easier to pack. The image stabilization is absolutely great and you can handhold at incredibly low shutter speeds and still get sharp images. There's less color fringing and less chromatic aberration. The focus is lightning quick it being an RF lens. And one of the other important things is that the minimum focus distance of the lens is only 47 inches. It's the smallest of the three. And so you can also you know, double as a macro lens and also you can get the, let the action get very close to you without it losing focus. The downside obviously that is it is an expensive lens. Over the years, I've learned the lesson that it's better to uh, spend the money and get the native uh, lens that you want rather than getting uh, third-party lenses because eventually in two or three years, you'll find that the image quality is lacking and you, you'll eventually sell them for a loss and end up getting the native lens anyway. I was quite surprised at how good the Sigma Sport lens was. It was sharp. It was sharper than the Tamron, but not quite as sharp as the Canon. The image stabilization on the Sigma Sport was very good. It was better than the Tamron at slower shutter speeds. It was not as good as the Canon's, but it was much better than the Tamron's. This is a heavy lens, extremely well made, and it's gonna be very durable. Um, now the focus points uh, on the R5, you know, with this lens didn't go all the way to the edges. It was almost like having an extender on uh, in that it didn't cover the whole field of view, but that was not, you know, uh, an issue for me in the field. Uh, the minimum focus distance is the longest of the three at 102 inches, and also the sport version is expensive at uh, almost $2,000. Now the contemporary version is much uh, less expensive at eight ninety nine uh, dollars, and I don't necessarily think there's an image quality difference between the two. It's mainly in how well made um, the uh, Sigma Sport version is. It's all metal, whereas the contemporary is mostly plastic. Um, I think there is also more glass elements on the Sigma Sport uh, lens, but I don't necessarily think the actual image quality is much different. So if, if it was my money, I would probably just get the cheaper version of the lens. So the Tamron lens was, um, you know, my least favorite of the three, um, mainly because of the inconsistent focus. So, you know, some images were sharp, some were less sharp, and that was, you know, a little annoying. So there was no way to tell which of your images, you know, would be sharp at the end. Um, and I think consistent uh, focus and consistent sharpness is, is important because, you know, if you have that one perfect uh, shot of a bird, and if it's out of focus, that's going to be frustrating. That being said, you know, can you get great images with the lens? Of course you can. You know, some images are very sharp and, you know, some Im images really don't require sharpness <laughs> to make the image look good. The image stabilization is uh, not on par with the other two. Um, at, at lower shutter speeds, there was, you know, a lot of blurring. So the um, image stabilization um, is much worse than the Canon and worse than the Tamron. It is less expensive. It does have some, you know, better features such as a better zoom lock. 
uh, the focus points on the R5 with this lens does go all the way to the edges and the minimum focus distance is a little better than the uh, Sigma Sport at 86.6 uh, inches. Uh, it is also uh, less expensive um, at uh, $1,399. So in conclusion, you know, I would get the uh, Canon 100 to 500 millimeter lens for the reasons described. If you just can't afford the Canon lens, I think the Sigma uh, would be the second choice and the Tamron would be the last choice for me. I hope you enjoyed this review. And once again, I hope you can subscribe uh, and like the video. Thank you very much.